at uh, reupholstering a couple headrests. Actually, I think just one because uh, I'm down sort of to the end of my material stash and I went through with my patterns and uh, I'm only going to be able to make one because I don't have quite enough of this tweed. So we're going to make one, see if we like it, and if I like it, I'll go buy some more tweed. If not, uh, we'll swap it out and do it all vinyl. Um, but the first thing we need to do is sort of analyze what they did in the original. And uh, they made these headrests look sort of overstuffed by sewing the back of this so it's almost, you know, flat with the back. But then the front, you can see, it kind of puffs out. So they used a piping back here, and then they used a top stitch here uh, to sort of make that. But what winds up the case is if you take the uh, front and back uh, pieces, the, the front one's substantially larger. I guess it's a quarter of an inch larger, and that's how you get the overstuff, you know. But what's weird is you know when you're sewing and putting things together uh, this length of the piece that you know goes around the perimeter has to be the exact same length as you know this area and then it also has to be the exact same length of here so what winds up the case is that the end cut here is actually diagonal because this is the perimeter of this one is shorter than the perimeter of that one so uh, as long as you understand that uh, that's that's how to you know kind of put those pieces together then if we look at the bottom you can see that this is actually two pieces on the bottom so that they could stretch over these pegs and then tuck in so here's how that's constructed is there's just sort of one thin strip over there and then this piece is actually left long on the ends and it tucks in and then this little flap comes and tucks in underneath there to kind of finish it all off. See how that all works? So that detail is fairly important if you want it to look finished. You can see there's a little hem on the edge here. So uh, as we go through and sew it, we'll kind of refer back to these and uh, make sure we're on the right track. Here's my pattern from the original that I cut apart for the front and uh, you know we traced it on there and sort of straightened up the lines a little bit and then uh, add three eighths of an inch all the way around the edge there and that's what we take up on the inside of the stitch and uh, you can see it uh, here you know how much they take up but usually after people get done making making something small like this they'll cut that down but three eighths of an inch is kind of where you want to be uh, when you're sewing and then you can you know cut it in half later I have all my patterns transferred here and laid out uh, with notes you know fold here hem here uh, all of it gets piping around the perimeter and while this looks like it's really fast on YouTube uh, this took me just over an hour to lay these out measure the selvage or uh, I don't know another word for it but that's the additional material that you need so that your stitch is on the inside line and this is just the extra so you know when you cut a pattern apart you have you get the inside line you gotta add your 3 eighths uh, and then you know measuring everything and getting it all right so just about just over an hour there uh, for those five pieces now if I were making another set uh, it'd be pretty quick uh, to do that because I have all the measurements already so and I did go ahead and make some of those notes. Uh, I'm losing it. There we go. You know, some some of those notes actually on the old pieces just so I have them. Our first operation here is going to be um, this is a matching fabric to our piping, and the piping is going to go around the perimeter here, but then it has to has to stop here, and then the other piece. Sorry, I don't have my other hand available. The other piece is going to be here too. So you want to cover that joint up. So this piece of fabric will go good face to good face and we'll sew this on. So then when we start our piping, we can go around and we don't have to worry about, you know, that joint. What we'll do is we'll fold this over and it'll make a nice finished edge. I've got uh, 
the first little piece of material that we're going to sew here and uh, we'll just go through a little bit of the sewing machine real quick because uh, everybody always asks me about how to sew so I'll, I'll give you what I know uh, I just watched a couple videos and that's how I learned um, kind of a couple rules that I've got I've got this red piece of tape here and it's exactly three-eighths of an inch from the center of the needle uh, I just laid that out one day and if you notice you know my lines are three-eighths of an inch is what I leave for the extra there and that needle hits dead center on that line every time if I'm lined up with this tape so that's just kind of a good way to do it on the fancy sewing machines they've got all kinds of measurements on this little plate this little plate here is just blank so uh, everything I do is done at three-eighths of an inch extra on there um, the bobbins under here uh, I can show everybody how to do that later um, but basically what you the general way you sew the way you think about things is you always put uh, good face to good face and you line them up the way you want them and usually you know you've got your edges lined up you know so this one's centered and lined up and uh, this one we're actually going to run um, let's call it a little bit inside of where I would normally sew it so I'm just going to line it up with my foot here rather than the line because this is going to get sewed uh, three times uh, once here uh, once to the piping and then the piping to the edging so you want that line to be pretty clean so if I sew inside of that line right now uh, as we work our way to the 3 8 of an inch line uh, then that line will be clean when everything flips inside out so we're going to flip our needle down um, and we're going to just run a couple stitches one Oops, I'm backwards. That's not good. There's a couple there real quick. And then you always go backwards. And that locks your stitch in. And then uh, we go forward. Like that. And you can always turn it by hand uh, to get exactly what you want. And then we're going to go backwards. Just like that and that locks it all in that backward stitch locks everything in uh, so then I'm bumping it back up to forward there for my next time so I don't start out in reverse again uh, sorry last time I did this I had a little little mechanical mishap so I had to stop the camera and I forgot to put it back into uh, forward there so that's our little piece uh, hopefully you can see that but you know since they were face to face now uh, when you open them up they'll be right sides out so that'll just cover up the ends of our piping and uh, our piping will look good so I'm gonna go ahead and sew the piping around the edge around the perimeter of this guy and uh, that'll set us up uh, then to sew uh, the edge that connects the front piece and the back piece. I took my stapler and uh, stapled all this in place this is these are really really difficult these corners like this uh, especially when you have this stiff material. So what I'm going to do is just stitch it uh, kind of in a few places around. I'm not going to do the whole thing.
figured I'd show this as well, uh, the old thread in the bobbin uh, routine in case somebody is brand new to uh, doing the old sewing there. Uh, sometimes we don't know everything, so I figured I'd show all the steps. Um, this machine has a little thing you unscrew here on the end, and that switches it over from sewing machine to uh, bobbin threader. And usually sewing machines have this little arm here. You put your bobbin on top, just kind of get your string started. And you step on the pedal. Oops. Let's try that again. This time a little more professionally. Hang on. And uh, I'll just hold this string right here. Flip that into. There we go. You can tell this machine's got a little uh, hitch in the giddy up there uh, with that. i got to sometimes put a little pressure on the arm. Most machines don't do that, so we'll tighten this back down. Then the next piece, I think, sorry about shaky cam there. There we go. You can see that, I think. Uh, I always wind a couple of them when I'm going, uh, just because you got to cut the thread and re-thread the machine. But, uh, so... Basically, you've got your bobbin holder, which is under here, and uh, this little arm releases it, you know, so when it's under there, you just pull the little arm, and when you're putting the bobbin in, uh, you can grab that little arm and it holds it from falling out, and you take your string, or your thread, sorry, and there's a little, I don't know what you want to call that, a little uh, cut there, and you just pull your thread through it, and then underneath there's these little, I don't know, they always look like lobster claws or something like that to me. Uh, just pull it underneath those, if you can. And uh, you're ready to go. There it goes. And so then you just pull this out. This goes up. And it locks into place. And then... Uh, I'll thread this guy. I guess you guys can watch that too. Uh, so most sewing machines have a little routine you got to go through. Uh, this one has got a tensioner here on the front. So you go down, up, if, you're, uh, if your stitches are not tight enough, it's probably because you don't have this threaded right. Uh, then this is the actual tensioner. You go around it and then back and then there's another little wire piece and you come back up and uh, you want your needle guy here like that. And there's one more little catch on the bottom that uh, you go through. It's like straight above the needle. And, uh, then we go just like that. And then, uh, if you watch down here, I'm holding the thread out from the needle, and we'll go down and we'll pick up the thread from the bottom. So as it comes up, uh, I should be able to simply just pull this thread, and I always have to take a little screwdriver. This this sewing machine is strange in the fact that the thread threads back through the foot kind of funny but that's okay so I take my little screwdriver and we get those all squared away now you're ready to go sorry I didn't show uh, the assembly of this guy <clears throat> we'll turn it inside out kind of like it was um, but I uh, you know sort of just I think they call that a basting stitch you know basting stitched the pieces together the the piping and the tweed then I came back and stapled uh, the outer vinyl to everything and then sewed the whole thing at once and uh, you know came out kind of nice and then I have this uh, front or the the flap that kind of closes it off on the bottom came back and stitched that on and you can see our tab here around our piping 
is uh, just like it should be. So we'll sort of repeat this process for the back side and the uh, difficulty factor kind of ratchets up because you run out of uh, place to sew and uh, sorry I didn't have the video camera on I just kind of get uh, I get a little worked up <laughs> when I do this and I don't know if I'd call it nervous but uh, it's it's pretty difficult and I just didn't want any more distractions uh, to get it right this is easily I, I would do you know seat backs all day long no pressure uh, when you get into the headrest they're just so small and there's so many bends they're very difficult to do we are getting ready to do the last, let's call it the last major uh, seam on this one. I've already sewed uh, the front side, the tweed side. That's all sewn up here. Now I've stapled uh, this piece, the back piece, to, you know, to this little two-incher that kind of goes between the two. I stapled it in place. So uh, first I went through and stapled the piping to this piece and then uh, came through and stapled the back to it so there's kind of two sets of staples in there when I sew it I'll have to kind of peel it apart and pull all the staples out which is no big deal but the staples kind of help you keep it all together especially with the curves the curves are the hardest part to kind of keep all the fabric where it's supposed to be because there's three layers and it all just kind of gets jammed up so anyway um, my battery's about dead but uh, we'll try and show this And uh, what you do, I've still got a little piece to sew here, but uh, again, my battery's dead, so we'll just flip this inside out quickly. And uh, you can see what we've got there. So again, uh, this will, this little guy, will come over like that and finish off. And that's what we'll have. And there we have it all wrapped up in the car on the seat. Now we just got to do number two. Don't let you lose those.